Robbing home court in round two, the Minnesota Timberwolves are not playing. Anthony Edwards is not the 80s version of the GOAT. The man's the championship version of MJ. Sixth man of the year, Nas Reed, roasted some nuggets under pressure to the point where 14 of his 19 were posted in the fourth quarter. The backbone and fan favorite to say the ultimate least for the state of Minnesota's lone NBA team scored 10 straight when it mattered most. Minnesota Mike was a game-high plus 20, but the 17-year vets' overlooked glue guy qualities have been severely undermentioned when it comes to what's made Mini a powerhouse. In addition to that, a round two film breakdown is on its way. For the first time in two years, the Nuggets are both behind in a playoff series and were beaten on their home floor in the playoffs. The beginnings of a potential Minnesota major sports dynasty behind the Timberwolves' 22-year-old franchise savior Anthony Edwards saw the Wolves win their fifth playoff game in a row for the first time in franchise history. Ant-Man dropping 40-plus in a second straight game made him one of two players age 22 or younger to ever do that back-to-back times in the playoffs, next to only the late great Kobe Bean Bryant. Edwards would fuel an 18-4 Minnesota hounding to start the game, which was utterly overwhelming for the defending champions. The run consisted of an ant triple threat and release over KCP, Conley find in towns as the trailer, Edwards elevating over Murray for a couple J's, Anthony executing this pistol action to get downhill, MJ 2.0 working off the ball by slipping a horn screen and cutting back door, then a 4-5 spread between towns and Gobert making french fries. As head coach Chris Finch was forced to watch from the bench with a knee injury, with fan-favorite assistant Micah Norrie stepping up, Minnesota's early second-round blitzing told us they had no issues getting into their offense, even without their main man in charge orchestrating things. The Nuggets' attempt to drop cover this Conley Gobert ball screen fails. Gobert's screen is too impactful for Murray to fight through. This forces Jokic to switch on to Conley. When Murray finally fights through the Gobert screen, a Conley Hezzy gets Jokic in retreat. Before Minnesota Mike follows through fluidly in the face of both Murray and Jokic, a shot after three to six dribbles that Conley made 54% of this season. Murray could have gotten away with this floater entry when Davis was the low man, not with three-time DPOY Gobert, who volleyballs the TO to trigger a five-on-three fast break, leading to Conley baiting triple to draw attention with a pump fake, that's chained into a bullet to Nas Reed. Reed in front, and jackhammers it in! DHO from Lee Kyer, Leeway is the Michael Jordan, I mean, Anthony Edwards' top of the key pull-up. Stagger action for Edwards this time forces Anthony to do a bit more individual creation. The caginess of the combination he hits KCP with gives Ant the space to establish position for a high post-up, where we witness a crafty as it gets foul line fade. Following Ant's subconscious scoring spree, only the beginning of the beastliness from the heart and soul of Minneapolis, Nas Rian, Nas Hilton Reed, would then ensue. Exposing a mismatch, Reed sends Holiday three games closer to vacation by drop stepping through him, as the hard to believe still 24 year old Nas takes an 11 year journeyman vet to school. It's Nas then faking a DHO to show off his insane skill off the bounce for a 6'9 center by 98 MJ pushing off Murray, momentum crossing to his offhand in traffic, and watch the ground Reed makes up to start his gather step just inside the arc, with his 1-2 step then taking him from that point to nearly the restricted area for a polished lefty finish. Forced to make a decision with the 24 nearly cooked, it's Edwards drawing all five nugget eyes, elevating for the lay but passing out of it just before landing to find a wide open read. This gets the nuggets scrambling, so Nas up fakes to catch Gordon flying by, and with no Murray Brown communication, it's Conley getting left wide to cap off some high IQ Minnesota boss movement. An Edwards zigzag through multiple Rudy ball screens leads to a snake dribble to get Brown trailing and a relentless attack of a crowded paint. Patented MJ 2.0 ISO of Gordon sees Ant's double hezzy stop on a dime tween chain to a momentum, shed Aaron to open up space for the midi. Nasty. The bank being open for Nas Reed to beat this shot clock buzzer initiated a flurry from the product of LSU. Despite being just within half court when Edwards enters the gather of this shot, we see Nas Rian swirl in to line up a beastly putback. 
from the hops and stamina to the skill, and Reed's cagey pivoting on the catch when gathering the Edwards skip pass gets Nas the angle to complete this and one. And for his ninth and 10th consecutive Minnesota points, it's Nas Rion getting left wide open by Gordon for this deep range bomb in the clutch. Matching everything Reed brings to the table is damn tough. One of just three Gobert field goals this entire game did come in the clutch, as the Nuggets front court allows the Frenchman to establish position for a follow-up of his own baguette. We certainly won't forget this Ant post-up on Contavious, where Anthony's unfazed by a soft Jokic stunt. Edwards fakes the sweep through with eye contact, then pivots to drift back for this delicate turnaround near the baseline, which would practically seal it and steal Minnesota home court in the second round. Ant's fellow top player for the opposing Nuggets and Joker hasn't been himself, as after turning it over seven times in the closeout game five against the Lakers, he turned it over another seven times in game one on Saturday. The real Joker amidst and after game one was for the Wolves, Micah Nori, who would joke post-game, quote-unquote, all the plays we scored on were my calls and all the plays we didn't were Chris Finch's. Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. For Denver, if it's not time for panic mode, then it's definitely time for the Nuggets to realize they're in the danger zone. Whether Denver stumbles upon that realization in game two and beyond or not, Minnesota's terrifying either way, because by putting their regular season best defensive rating on full display, the Wolves currently seem like they won't be denied in getting revenge for their loss in last year's first round to these Nuggets. Mike Conley's stabilizing and guidance of Minnesota's young talent, and when it comes to on-court ability strictly, sound fundamentals, and high IQ, are responsible for increasing the respectability of this Timberwolves franchise. Conley's quarterbacking at the head of the snake can dictate the tempo of games. Conley's communication, positioning, and lateral quickness still make him an above-average backcourt defender. Pairing what Mike gives you at the point of attack with what Gobert gives you on the back line, and with athletic phenoms like McDaniels and Edwards shutting down the wing, meshed with the fact that this Wolves team is pesky and sound defensively 1-15, through 15, and what you get is a generational defense. Are the Timberwolves eliminating the Denver Nuggets in this series, in your opinion, though? Drop a take for a chance at next video's comment or shout-out, and for free merch of your choosing. Today's shout-out goes to JJD, who says, I still have the Knicks in six. While the Pacers have an absurd ability to shoot and create open looks, the Knicks are going to do what they do, slow down the pace and run the offense through Brunson. The Pacers have the talent to match the Knicks in some aspects, but if the Knicks slow it down the way they want to, expect this to be over in five or six. This has been your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.